You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from College Park, Maryland, 86-52 over Mount St. Mary's. Maryland trailed early 10-0, and then Florida they erupt. I'm Wayne, that's Mason. Joining us for this basketball season is former Turf, always a Turf, James Gist. So, I'm going to instantly turn to Mason and say, do you like what you saw tonight? I certainly did. Uh, a lot of fun out here to watch. It, it's been missing here in College Park. The shooting, the up and down offense, and Derek Queen is really, really fun to watch. Uh, he is. He had some, some great moves, but James is somebody who's looking to be a coach. What did you see that really turned you on about this basketball team? Um, the biggest thing that I saw was that Maryland came and took control of the game. You know, they really dominated the second game of the season. You're trying to figure out your team as a coach. You're trying to understand what your strong points are, what your weak points are. And they came out here and really had a 40-point win. And I think absolutely player of the game is Rodney Rice. He transfers in from Virginia Tech and he had some great numbers. But the number one number that jumps off the score sheet, which you have right here, is a plus 42. It's hard to get a plus 42. In 20 minutes, he scores 28 points, 10 of 14 from the field, 3 of 5 beyond the arc, 5 of 5 from the line, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. If that game had gone on longer, if this had been maybe a more important game, he probably could have gotten to 40. And 40 would have been easy in the first 10 minutes of the second half. Yeah, but the Kevin... Kevin keeps him on the bench, and and that's just the 20 minutes. They did manage basically to play everybody. But James, if you notice, the lineup combos weren't crazy. It was really the same set of guys. It wasn't what we've seen in the past where you got a coach that's like, oh, I think we're 10 deep, and you end up with eight different lineup combos playing. It seemed to be consistent rotation out there, which is good when you have uh, top 20 team coming in next Friday. That's true. I mean, looking at the way the roster is built up, we have a little bit of experience, you know, juniors, seniors, some returning players as well uh, with some transfers. And I mean, the way that they shot the ball tonight, it gives you confidence that we, we have a team with, with some very strong points. And I think that they can be something big this season. Well, this is the Big Dog Post Game Show. We will be back in College Park in a moment after this word from the Big Dog himself. So Terp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jacklich Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1. But as you know, Coach, it's not the last win, it's the next win that's so important. And that's why we continue to hustle, continue to work so hard for all of our clients to earn that name, the Big Dogs in the small firm. Just like you do. You get your guys hustling all the time. That's why we love you, Rick. And most of all, go, go Terps! Terps. Welcome back to the Xfinity Center floor. Bruce is in the studio tonight. Bruce, what do you make of this schedule coming up from here until about January 1st? There's some exciting games. All right, Wayne, great to be on board tonight. And a great display by Rodney Rice. Holy cow. 10 for 14. 28 points. Who knows what he could have scored? But this kid is a gunner. He is a real shooter. He's open. He's going to fire it. I love it. This could be the guy to help put us over, when I say the top, maybe into the top 20. Um, all right. Let's take a look at where we go from here. A&M on Monday. All right. 7 o'clock. Uh, then Marquette. Marquette led by Cam Jones and Chase, Re Chase Rose. Uh, picked to be number 19 by Jay Billis in the country. And, of course, coached by Shaka Smart, uh, VCU and Texas on his resume. And now at Marquette, seems to love it there. Had a great year last year. From there, uh, the Terps 
come back to Canisius, and then have a neutral game at Villanova in Newark, New, Je- New Jersey. Uh, Willard wanted to get back to his roots there. And Villanova lost to Columbia 90 to 80. Kyle Neptune, could he be on the hook? I don't know. Two straight NCAA non appearances. And uh, I don't know. Can't can't keep happening to Villanova. They took care of Maryland last year, I'll tell you that much. From there, Bucknell, always a tough competitive team, well disciplined, well coached squad on the 27th and Sunday, December 1, Alcorn State, uh, December the 4th, first Big Ten game of the year, Ohio State. All right, and that's at College Park. Ohio State ranked right around where Maryland is. Maryland's number 30. Ohio State's number 32. We know the name Bruce Thornton. He's back. And John Mobley, good team, always a well-coached team, always a team with Maryland that they go wire to wire, tooth and nail to the gun. A great opener for Maryland. And then a few days later, four days later, they go to Purdue. And Purdue now, without Zach Eady, Thank heavens we don't have to face him anymore. Now, now we got two weapons that could have uh, battled him, a Derek Queen, but that's old news, right? He'll have to play him on the next level. But uh, had enough of Zach Eady. Braden Smith, their guard, their 6'1 guard is fantastic. That's who Maryland will have to deal with. And uh, from that point on, they do face uh, Syracuse, struggled against LeMoyne in their first game. Play Syracuse on December 21st, St. Francis in between, and then Maryland Easter Shore rounds out the season uh, before January 1. So ambitious schedule, big-time schedule by our coach, and I love it, and that's what it should be. That's what he promised, and that's what he delivered this year. Wayne, great win. Rodney White Rice, I'm ecstatic about. Back to you. Back here on the floor at Xfinity Center. Mason, you brought up that it was 10 nothing quick. And of course, I start having some doubts about what are we seeing here. And, and then the team takes off. How, how do you look at that? And why do you keep starting slowly? Well, the, the second part I'll leave to our basketball expert. The first part, I think, really does prepare you for what a season can bring and when you get into March where you hope a team like this is playing you might play an opponent like a Mount St. Mary's and they get that jump on you but James it's really important to learn how to fight that you know you give up 10 early points maybe you weren't thinking that that was what was going to happen but you immediately get back into your rhythm you find a couple of baskets and it, it right. starts to build that confidence which is what you want to do early in the season right definitely uh, I mean with teams like this you got to think that they know that they're coming into a play a team like Maryland for once. So they're going to have all the energy from the very beginning. They're going to come with everything that they have. In those first few minutes, you really have to weather the storm being the home team or being the dominant team because they're going to make shots that they probably wouldn't normally make in those situations. And so showing that Maryland kept their composure and was able to gain control once they got comfortable in the rhythm of the game, that's a good thing. But you definitely want to start off games a lot stronger because there's going to be moments where you're not going to be able to come back from 10 The game can be over that quick. Now, the slow starts, what what can you do to kind of start to find something early? Do you go to a set? What, what kind of um, jumps a team? It depends on the game. It depends on the game plan, you know, and where you're trying to attack. I know uh, in the game against Manhattan, I think they started the game off with a pick and roll between Reese and, uh, and Queen. In this game, they started off with a you know, play from the top of the key where he was able to go one-on-one from the top. I mean, you can try to get movement and things like that, but I think it's more so being locked in from a defensive end with the intensity. I mean, with the turnovers that they caused uh, Mount St. Mary's to make the night, they show that they can press full court. They show that they can bring that. But for the very first minute, that's important, especially when the Big Ten play starts. So you brought up, hey, look, they're playing zone, and it sort of took the inside game out. I think Derek Queen, at least from the notes I have, might have had one rebound tonight because it was a different game. What does playing zone against this team do to the twin towers of Queen and Juju? Well, one thing it does is uh, it allows the, op- the opposing team to be able to control that paint presence. You know, so you got guys like Reese, you got guys like Queen who can dominate the boards. I mean, last game Queen had 20 rebounds, 22 rebounds. 
Uh, Reese almost had a double double tonight. I think he missed it by one. Um, you have players that are constantly rebounding in the paint and can finish in the paint. Zone takes that away. You know, one thing Maryland struggled with last year was the outside shooting consistently. And tonight, of course, you know, Rice made shots. Um, and some of the other guards on the team made shots, and that was a huge thing. Tonight. So, I mean, zone, you see where, where you're weak, you see where you're strong. Man to man, you see where you're weak, you see where you're strong. And I think these games right now, building up the conference play, it really helps see that. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this Friday night. We look forward. Hey, we got to look at those football uniforms for tomorrow. Are they as good as I think they are? I don't know. You got to see them on the field. You always got to see them on the field. You can make everything look good with the camera. <laughs> that's, that's why we look that's good right now. That's why it looks good, right. And and for those who, I'm sure, if you're watching now, you watch the beginning of this show, all of that video of that new scoreboard, the scoreboard looks pretty good. You've been in a lot of arenas all over the world. Does that look like a top rated? It's definitely one of the top ones. I was noticing during the game that they even had the monitors up inside the, the jumbo trying. So that's you know one of those things, especially as players, you're walking down, you see players always looking up trying to get to the side of the screen. And now you can look straight up and see everything. I mean, they did a lot of a lot of good things with this. All right, James, thanks for joining in. You'll be back, of course, next week. Marquette, big focus game. Mason, thanks as always. This has been the Big Dog Post Game Show. Maryland, all over Mount St. Mary's. We will see you after the Oregon game tomorrow afternoon. Good evening.